So, <laughs> the time is here. You've either one, decided that you are going to use the iPad with gear, or two, you've already done that. And perhaps you have one piece of gear, maybe you've got 10 pieces of gear, and you're ready to make that work. This video is to try and help answer some of the questions that come up to guide you into or along the way of some things to consider. Uh, I am not here to push any of the gear that you see. I am not sponsored by anybody. These are things that I have purchased over a period of years and I'm sharing what I've learned with you, not as factual, but some things that I picked up along the way that can kind of help you out in terms of what you need to make things talk, you know, your gear and your iPad to talk. Also, if you are, are on this journey, you've been doing this longer than me and there are things that I've missed or that I've misspoke on, please in the comments, because we're trying to help others. And again, I'm really trying to save those who are just getting started, frustrations that I encountered along the way to help you out. The other thing that I need to mention is I'm focusing on the iPad with a USB type C port. I've talked at length about that. I'm not going to go in much more detail. Only to say is that is my personal preference and I have a much better experience with this type of an iPad. So I will not be getting into iPads with lightning ports. If you have a question about that, I'm gonna direct you to find other videos that can better help you. I just prefer not to go that route. All right, so the basic way to connect gear to the iPad is what I call the direct route. And that is one cable from the gear to the iPad. Now I have an example here, the Roland S1. And in this particular case, I can plug in USB-C to the back of the S1, plug the other end into the iPad. The iPad sees this as an audio interface that can transmit audio back and forth and MIDI back and forth as well too. Now the problem is there's not, at least at the time of this recording of this video, there's not a lot of gear that you can do this with. I believe, not believe, I actually when I was at Novcon, I was able to connect the Roland, S4, Roland SP404 Mark II directly to the iPad and I was able to get that to work. Outside of that, it's gonna depend on your gear. So what you have, that may not be the case. And if that doesn't work, then your next step are two options. I'm gonna cover one that <laughs> I'm laughing because when I got into this, it seemed super cool, but over time, wow. And warning, this may be a trigger to some. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep the language clean, but let's just say, welcome to dongle, what is it? H-E double hockey sticks is what we used to say as kids. Yeah, these are your options. Now, for me to say, which one is the best is not going to help you out. And I say that because one of the issues that you may run into, although I've not personally run into, is if Apple doesn't update, it could render one of these useless. Some don't like the fact that this thing you've got, again, each, every one is different. You know, people see this like that's hanging off the iPad. I don't want that. Well, they have ones that are flush. Well, then the other problem is th this is the very first one that I bought. But if I put a link down in the description for you, it's unavailable, and it's been unavailable for a while. And how many times have you seen a video where someone says, hey, here's the link to this device or item, and it's not in stock? Well, thanks. That doesn't help me much. Um, so I, I've bought these over years. They have their purpose, uh, but it's something that <laughs> I'm just going to say, it, it's frustrating. It works. And, and really the use case for this is, let's say that I want the S1 and a keyboard. So I want to use, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to use this kind of a setup. So I already said, if you plug in this, oh, I didn't already say that, but if you plug in the Roland S1 into the, the iPad, that's it. I can't plug anything else in. That's where something like a dongle comes in. It plugs into the iPad. Then I can take this and plug it into here, coming out of my MIDI keyboard. 
And then if I have a dongle that has a spare USB-C, then the Roland can come into here. And now I have the option, because I have this dongle, to where I can do that. Now the other thing you need to keep in mind is when you, if you decide to go down the dongle route, is you need something that has a headphone port. Because once you plug this in here, now there's been a new update, so I, I need to throw this in there because <laughs> if I had done this video just a few days ago, then it wouldn't be the case. You can now with iOS 17.1.1 have audio come out of the speakers. That's new. Um, now I haven't tested in this scenario, but in that video I, I mentioned, I believe in theory this should work. So I probably should do that off camera just to make sure and then come back and and post and confirm with you because I don't want to mislead you. So you could do that option. But again, you're getting audio out of the iPad speakers and maybe that's not what you want. You want to have something that sound, you want to hear that bass, you want to hear that clarity. Or perhaps you want to maybe share it with, with others. You want to pipe it out someplace. Well, you're going to need to have some way to get the audio out here. So whether it's plug in some headphones or shipping this out to an interface. So that's something else to keep in mind. And, and that's something that I highly recommend that if you decide to get a dongle, and again, these things, they're not cheap, or excuse me, they're not expensive, so that is a, a selling point. You know, these things are, are fairly budget friendly. So that is a recommendation. Now, some of these things have all kinds of stuff. You know, is SD card important for you? Again, because we know we can't have, the, you know, we're limited with the storage on here, so maybe that's important. I personally have never used an HDMI. Maybe that's something for you. Uh, so you're just gonna find that based on you know what your needs are there are tons of things out there that that you can get this particular one here i'm a massive fan of do i need an ethernet port eh, probably not um you know hdmi i mean it's again it just depends on what you want i've got others that have you know multiple usb-c type ports um, the i rig on here that's a whole nother conversation that i'm not going to get into this video but bottom line, this is an option. Um, they do work, but it's a lot of trial and error. And I don't know how many times I bought devices and had to return them because they didn't work. So I'm not trying to avoid, because again, that's a question you're gonna get. What should I get? And I don't think, I mean, everybody can give you an answer, but in, in my experience, I just say buy one, but look for a headphone port. I think that's most important. Um, and then depending on what you get, um, let's say that, you know, because sometimes your iPad can power some things, but it's also good to have an extra power port in case you find that it doesn't, then you're going to have to plug into some kind of external power. Now, if the dongle thing is not for you, the other option you have is something like the Arteria Mini Fuse. Now, Again, like I said, I'm not trying to push anything on you. This is just what I have. The benefit of this, one, you can also power it with the iPad. So it's still a USB-C from here to the iPad. And this does power this. So that's really cool. And then you've got your two XLR input jacks. So let's say now you want to bring in a microphone. Now with those dongles that I showed you, you're not plugging an XLR into that. So this gives you the option. Maybe you want to plug in a guitar. That's the thing you want to do. So you've got that option. Or you just got two audio inputs here that you didn't have over on those dongles. And the other thing too, dongles, unless you find the right one, getting audio into a dongle, good luck. I mentioned that iRig, that's part of the reason why I have that. Then you've also got a hub on here. So I could plug in a USB hub and put in a keyboard. I could put in a launch control XL. I could put in a launch pad. And then I've got MIDI in and out, and I've got the option of bringing in audio out to an interface. Say I want to go live stream or something. So you've got that. And then um, you've got your headphone. So again, I mentioned you can get the audio from the speaker, but you definitely have a headphone in, in most all of these devices. So again, whether you get the Scarlet, whether you get this, I mean, it just depends on, you know, budget and things of that sort. So you've got the direct connection gear to the iPad. When that doesn't work, dongles, next step, something like this. Now, let's say you start getting, or <laughs> you are already there. You get, you know, just super nerdy, you geek out, uh, you wind up like I used to be, and you want to throw the kitchen sink at your iPad, 
Or maybe you saw my video where I failed at that. You're like, you know what? Wabbit doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to make this work. I've got <laughs> seven, eight pieces of gear. I'm going to put them on the iPad. I know about AUM. You know what? This is, this is how I roll. Then you're going to neat up your game and get something like this where you're having multiple inputs. In this particular case, you have eight ends and you've got the option for eight at. And yes, <laughs> I do have a device I can plug into here. I have gone down that, that route. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind is not only do you lose the portability because this is not something you're going to throw in your backpack. This is going to stay in your studio. This has to be powered. With these type of things, now you're starting to open yourself up into other complexities, you know, potential noise issues. Not that you're not going to deal with those, but, you know, depending on, you know, what your electricity is like at your house, are you going to run into that? Because I run into that as well, too. You know, you've got to do a lot of tweaking and setting and making sure you're getting your, your knobs and everything and buttons and right. So it can be done. It's just one of those things where it's not a simple plug and play. And I say this because when we watch the kids play on YouTube, they've got things connected. They've probably been doing this for a while. There's been a lot of trial and error. You don't really hear that when you see a jam. You just hear it and it looks great. And you see the questions. How are you connecting it? So that's what I wanted to share in this video at a high level. If you have... Now, the other thing, too, I know I just showed you the S1, but let's say... just I just want to show you, for example, you've got a synth you want to bring in. And again, you're going to have to take a look at your INOs. I, I think that's the best way um, to, to say this. And, and what are you trying to do? Do you want to get MIDI you know, into the iPad? Is that going to be part of your workflow? Do you want the iPad to sequence your gear? And then how are you going to get the audio? You know, are you wanting to use the iPad for some effects? You got to somehow get the audio into that. So again, the other thing I didn't even talk about when you start getting into this and you start having this or even this <laughs> the other question is cables so the direct method i mean yeah this is the preferred option but not everybody has this device or has the gear one cable you're done now you notice i didn't mention bluetooth or some type of wireless i personally don't go there because of latency. Now, things may change, you know, from the time I record this video to the time you watch in the future. Maybe that becomes not an issue. But as I'm recording this, latency is a, a, an issue, and I don't mess with anything wireless. But if you don't have this simplicity of just one cable, that's where you have to start getting into these type of things and the wires and cables that come with it. So... I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> and, and, and someone's going to watch this and realize, oh, I didn't realize that was the situation. And if that's the case, that's a good thing because I hate for people to come into this space and become frustrated. This can be a lot of fun. The fact that you can do the things that you can do with this stuff is amazing. And you can make awesome music. Yet you have to have that understanding at least of, these are some of the things that I need to do. And that is the purpose of this video and these type of videos. I know it's not sexy talk. <laughs> There's no music in here. I'm not Mr. Beasting you. But it's something that if you are serious about this, it's something that you need to understand so that you can have a good experience and have fun. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. All right. Again, if you have been in this space and you have some suggestions, you have some uh, ideas, I, I missed something or I misspoke on something, please, in the comment section, put that in there because that can help. And then get out there and have fun. And if you want to share your stories, if you have some things you've learned as well too, you're getting started, or if you're just getting started and have some questions, I can't promise that I can answer every single thing, but I'll do my best or hopefully somebody else will see that and can help you as well too. It's a wonderful community. Welcome if you have just recently gotten started and I really do hope you enjoy your time um, on this journey of making some music.
This is Wabbit. I do appreciate your time. Thank you for sticking around. Get out there, have a lot of fun, stay safe, keep your head on a swivel, and I do hope to catch you in another video. And until then, keep jamming.